So that, you know, it is that real connection between what's its value and how can we hold back and what's the human values that we have to retain that are important. Absolutely. Um, I know we have an opportunity to take some, some questions uh, from the audience, uh, so feel free if you um, would like to type in a question to slide up. Um, but just in terms of um, what, what is possible bringing technology into the equation, you know, we've talked about training through VR and immersive learning, uh, we've talked about uh, AI as a way to kind of track on a macro level people's behavior um, in you know, what has in the past been very fuzzy and unable to kind of have um, objective uh, data on. Um, are there other ways that you see technology fundamentally changing the way that we, we learn and interact um, in a work environment? Anybody? Yeah, yeah well, I, I guess one thing that I'll say um, is uh, it's some of the dangers that we have. So we, because we work such different hours, and I, I, we were saying before, you know, my work day when I'm in Australia starts at eight at night and, and finishes at four or five in the morning because 99% of the time I'm working with the, with the UK or the EU. Um, but one of the things that the challenges and things that I've found in my work environment is the need for instantaneous responses. So the, the, the way we're using technology now, um, using you know, email, messaging, text, WhatsApp and so forth, we send a message, we automatically assume the person on the other end is able to, is in the frame of mind, is not fatigued, all those sort of things, and will instantly respond. Now there's a difference between responding and reacting. So I think there's some, some things that we need to look at in terms of what those dimensions are. That, you know, if we go back a few years ago, if we could received a letter, we had to, the time to respond, which means we use different language sets, we, we have different tones in our voices, which means we don't create conflict. People get really annoyed when you say no and you don't give an explanation, but they want an answer straight away and you can't type because you're on the plane or you're on the phone, you know, wherever you are. So they're the sorts of things that we need to be mindful of and when we're talking and using those engagement um, tools, that we need to remember the human element of it. So next time you do get a message, just think, well, that person hasn't responded. Um, I prefer to get a good response rather than a reaction. So I think they're some of the things that we need to be cautious of, but certainly embrace at the same time. So I'm all over it, <laughs> right? Um, some of the things that I'm really interested in um, is ways that we can use technology to deeply connect with ourselves and connect with other people. So one example, one test that we're going to do is um, haptics um, are pretty amazing. Your brain takes in information and makes sense of it. And so a very you know, uh, explicit example is that uh, blind people can see to, enough to navigate a room and deaf people can hear if the view of the room and the sounds are tapped onto their skin. And so um, on teams, whether they're distributed or together, there's a storming, norming, forming process. I think that we can use bio signals, your bio data, which reflects your psychological state. I think we can use a mix of bio signals in order to uh, accelerate the storming, norming, forming process. And we're gonna start testing that at Stanford later this year. Um, there's others, there's some fun things that are a little bit invasive but interesting, like there's a product called Empath, which is taking the, uh, it's listening to the words in a meeting, um, and when it starts to get aggressive, or you know, when it get, starts to get covert, um, the, the lighting in the room, because it's been connected to a hue system, starts to change, and you might think, well, why do I need lighting to show that you know, this person is being aggro against me? Well, if you think about what goes wrong and sideways on teams, is that often that is happening and we don't talk about it. Like we pretend it didn't happen, and then that's what goes to rot inside an organization, large or small. Um, or things like if a, um, there was another study that was done at Stanford that had a little robot on the table and during ideation. And if the robot periodically piped up and said, oops, I made a mistake, then the net number of ideas that the humans generated was actually more than when it was silent. And so this is still very early, but these are examples of how we can, you know, use technology to get, to help humans be more human with one another. So it's not about replacing our senses or, or um, you know, or having us interface slowly with a bot, I mean only with a bot, 
Uh, it's really about how do we how do we establish a level of individual and group understanding so that when we're together in our very human sense, we actually get to make the most of that experience um, and, and, and have the, you know, the best outcomes from it. There's a great question here from the audience uh, with three upvotes. Innovation in tech is great, but we're seeing more and more burnouts at work. How do we train people to remain emotionally stable if helping tech is not available? So this question of self-care um, is, and avoiding burnout is key, so. Yeah, um, three things, the top three things to do. One, um, sleep train. So really learn how to sleep. Sleep has one of the biggest effects on your psychological well-being. It also changes how much negativity you notice, um, and this is, this is proven. It changes your hormone levels. So really it's like take your sleep very, very seriously. And if you sleep well for 10 days, it's like your life is different. So number one, sleep. Also, if you drink three hours before you go to sleep, you, have, you don't sleep as deeply. Um, so think about that. Um, another thing is meditate, get a, get a meditation practice. It's the easiest thing, you can do it without technology. It's fundamentally one of the most important things that you can do. Uh, because it's the beginning of, of uh, deeply connecting to one itself and understanding that just because you have an angry thought, it doesn't make you an angry person and starting to have that distance. And then the last thing is to understand that you're on the hero's journey. So um, how you think about stress has a big impact on its physiological effect on you. And so, you know, I love what you said about people going from, they might have three or four startups and what happens in the startup because I think the startup founder is actually on the hero's journey. And if you are simultaneously meditating or doing things that allow the rejection and the hardship to actually deconstruct your ego, then you can make building a startup one of the most spiritual things that you can do. Uh, and so those three things. Yeah, and this is from a, a personal, I mean, individual and personal point of view. I think for, we, we as entrepreneurs or, or companies, we have we have a responsibility in it too. And, and it's uh, for me, it's very important to uh, set up the expectation. I think communication is key. Uh, you need to talk with people. You need to talk with your team. You need to have like those uh, candid conversations uh, without, uh, I mean, of course you set boundaries, but um, uh, you're, it, it's not like you're having a conversation with your friends when you're having a conversation with your, your teammates. But I think it's very important that, that we can have this uh, openness in, uh, in this discussion. And that goes back, for me, it goes back to the value and the culture of the company. So uh, if, if people works with you, understand uh, which values uh, you, you, are, you are running in the company, uh, what culture you want to uh, extend, then, then uh, it's, it's much uh, easier for them also either to cultivate these, these personal things and also to share any beginning, any moment where they feel like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, of the age and uh, I really need to, uh, to have a conversation. I also like to bring things down to a really a practical and tangible purpose and, and um, I think that I like to think that if you can't measure something, you can't do something about it either. So um, I like to think in it in terms of a bit preventative way. And I'll just use it as an example. A number of years ago, I was uh, engaged in an external study program. I was heading into study medicine. And um, most of the people and the individuals in this program were studying very late at night. So the university involved decided that they needed to proactively look after the mental health and the well-being um, of the participants. And there was a reason for it. They wanted them to engage and to complete their studies and they wanted them to have you know, sustainable lives. So the minute we used to log on, you used to, well, there was just a tag ball. It was one word. You were only given an opportunity. You couldn't get past it. Everybody had to do it. So how was your day? It was, I can't remember the exact question, but something like, how was your day? You gave one word. The words that we gave and the tone that you gave meant that it, it actually caused in behind the scenes um, an, an interactive process. So if you said stressed, for example, the um, a team, that's a physical team that sat in behind it would look at it and say stressed, what are they stressed about? They would look at, for example, were they late with their assessments, were they late with their assignments, were there any you know, issues that were involved? And they proactively got involved with the individual at a personal level. It was just a tag ball, that's all it was. Something as simple as putting a word in. So I think there's two key parts what um, you said in the sense that we need to have some open conversations 
Entrepreneurs are always really good at being happy and bright and bubbly and this is fantastic and wonderful. But knowing we sit in behind it, we have some really stressful days where we think, God, I don't want to get out of bed today because I just don't know how I'm going to get through today. So I think open and honest conversation is really, really important. And at these events where we truly can engage with other entrepreneurs who've experienced those things, because until we say it, we can't do anything about it. Until we acknowledge it, we can't do anything about it. When we're stressed financially because we, we can't get capital and we're thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through, I don't know how to pay my bills, those sorts of things. Um, I think that there's, there's an element we have to have open and honest conversation because until we can, can say it and do it and measure it, we can't do anything about it. And we can engage with technology to do that and uh, do it proactively. It's just no different than going and having a test for you know, cancer or whatever. We have to test our mental health and measure it so we can do something about it. Um, so I think that's really important. Fantastic. That's, that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.